In this video, I'm going to work through some examples from section 3.3. And most students tell me that they like 3.3 a lot. They think this one is much more kind of direct and straightforward, and students seem to have fun with this section. First example, a card is drawn from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. Find the probability that the card is an ace or a black card. All right, so try to picture the deck, if you will, and we've got our aces, and there's an ace that's a heart, a spade, a club, and a diamond. Well, two of those are actually red, and two of them are black. The um, clubs and spades are the black cards. So we have overlap. These events are not mutually exclusive because it's possible to be both an ace and a black card. So to work out our probability, we're trying to find the probability of an ace or a black. So that means we need to find the probability that it's an ace, add the probability that it's black, and then subtract the probability something's in the overlap. Well, in our deck, we have four out of 52 aces, and then half the deck is black. That means 26 out of the 52 cards are black. And then of those, two of the ace cards are actually black, so we need to subtract out two out of 52. Now, in this problem, notice it says find the probability that the card, it's singular. So we're just choosing one card here. And that's why for the addition rule, the denominators never change, because we're not picking a card and then picking another card and we could be removing things. We're just picking one thing. So we have the whole deck at our, um, it's available to us. And so we're, we're just picking one, but we're trying to find the probability it's either or. It's this or it's that. Another example, a group of students were asked if they carry a credit card. Their responses are listed in the table. We want to find the probability of randomly choosing a student who is a freshman or a credit card carrier. Well, looking at our chart, going across we have the freshman row, and then going up and down we have the credit card row, and those overlap. We see that there's 40 students that are in both, so again, these events are not mutually exclusive because there are people that are in both. So if we want to find the probability of being a freshman or a credit card carrier, we need to find the probability of being a freshman, add to it the probability of being a credit card carrier, which I abbreviated here by just CC, and then we have to subtract off the probability that somebody is in both, that they are a freshman and carry a credit card. So looking at our chart going across, there are 60 total freshmen, so we get the 60 out of 100. Then looking up and down at the credit card carrier column, there are 60 students that carry a credit card, so there's our second 60 over 100. And then if you look where that row and column intersect, there are 40 students who are both freshmen and credit card carriers. So we have to subtract out the 40 people in the overlap. And again, I am perfectly happy if you leave all of your answers for me as unreduced fractions like this. I'd actually prefer it. It makes grading so much easier and it gets you more partial credit because you don't make silly mistakes by trying to simplify fractions. Next example, 100 people were asked, do you favor the death penalty? Of the 33 that answered yes to the question, 14 were male. Of the 67 that answered no to the question, 6 were male. If one person is selected at random, what is the probability that this person answered yes or was a male? I think the hard part about this question is it's a lot of words, and there's a lot going on. In my opinion, the easiest way to deal with this is to kind of make a chart. So we know our total number of people is 100. And let's see, we have 33 total people that answered yes, and 14 of them were men. We have 67 people that answered no, and six of them were men. So if we just put that basic information in the chart, and I'm sorry if it's kind of small, we have 100 total people, 33 people said yes, and 14 were male, and then 67 people said no, and six of those were male. Well, now we can kind of fill in the rest. We know 14 plus the females has to equal 33, and six plus the females equals 67, so we can do a little bit of subtraction to figure out those missing values, and then add across the rows to get the new totals, to fill in our total chart. And then once we have this chart, it makes it a whole lot easier to answer the question. If we're trying to find the probability somebody said yes or is a male, we need to find the probability somebody said yes, plus the probability somebody is a male, and then subtract the overlap, the probability that they said yes and are a male. So the total number that said yes was 33 out of 100. Total number of men that we have is 20 out of 100. And then 14 people are males and said yes, they support the death penalty. One more example. A card is drawn from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. Find the probability that the card is an ace or a king. So you have to ask yourself, can a card be an ace and a king at the same time? And the answer is no, 
It cannot. A card is either an ace or it's a king or it's something else, but you cannot pick one card out of the deck that's both an ace and a king at the same time. So these events are mutually exclusive because there's nothing in the overlap. There is not a single card that could be considered an ace and a king. So if we want to find the probability of an ace or a king, we find the probability of an ace, and we add to it the probability of a king, but we don't have anything to subtract off this time because there's nothing in the overlap. The probability of finding an ace and a king is zero. So we're technically subtracting zero. That doesn't do anything, so might as well not even write it. So probability of an ace is 4 out of 52. Probability of a king is 4 out of 52. So that tells us that there's eight total cards in the deck that are considered either an ace or a king.